Hi, I'm Cliff, and this is my garage. Today, I'm going to show you how to remove this thing the right way. Hey, welcome back to the garage. And if this is your first time joining me, thanks for dropping by. There are a number of videos on YouTube showing you how to remove the grill out of the side of a Cayman. And when I was first starting to work on my original 987.1 Cayman, I took a look at these and everyone I found basically said the same thing. You just take, you grab hold of this thing with your fingers or maybe with some tape and you just yank on it and pop it out. Well, that does work most of the time. It, well, it actually works all the time. The grill will come out. But as I learned on my first Cayman, the problem is there's a very good chance you'll end up breaking either the grill or the subframe. There are uh, little tabs and slots, and if you just yank on them, it, they end up breaking. So I started trying to find a better way when I did it on my 987.2, and I did figure out a better way, and I wanted to share it with you. As my more astute viewers may notice, I have already removed the grill and subframe out of the Cayman. And the reason I'm doing that is to show you how it goes together. And I just, I think that if you see how it clicks back together, it becomes much clearer what I'm doing and why I'm doing it when I take it apart. So first we're gonna put it in, then we're gonna take it out. Just to get some nomenclature out of the way, I call this the subframe and I call this the grill. Porsche's official names are that this is the grill and this is the slat. Why? I have no idea, but subframe and grill make sense to me, so that's the names that I'll be using. Let's start off by installing the subframe, and the way the subframe attaches to the car body is using these little, like, button connectors, and there are four of them located around the opening. And the way they work is they slide into this little slot on the back of the frame, or the side of the frame, and then they clip into place. This little tab here holds the button in place. So let's put this back in. It just clips into a hole there and you install it by aligning those slots onto these little button connectors. And it's a bit finicky to get them in place because they tend to slide on, slide in on top instead of actually going into the, the slot itself. And then you just push it in and now it's snapped right into place. The grill is also held on at four points. There are two tabs here that lock into slots on the top of the subframe. And then there are two additional little tabs here and here that lock onto slots here in the subframe, these little spars that are going across. Installing is pretty simple. You just put the top in first and then push. And there it is. Now, how do we get it back out? To get it back off, you're going to need a screwdriver or something similar to it. Uh, and it's a little bit picky exactly what size you need. You need a fairly thin screwdriver, but then it also needs to be the correct width. And uh, if it's too narrow, then it just rotates around. You need to twist to release the tabs. And if it's too narrow, well, then it doesn't spread the parts enough far enough to release the tab. Conversely, if it's too wide, it tries to spread too much of the parts apart and it doesn't work that way. So what you need is a, a thin screwdriver or something like it that's about an eighth of an inch wide, which is like, uh, if I recall correctly, about four millimeters. If you look closely here, and hopefully this is coming across in the camera, the horizontal bar here of the grill and the horizontal bar here of the subframe do not line up with each other. The, the one for the grill is on top of the one for the subframe. The same thing is true down here. 
there's the, the grill here and the subframe underneath. And so that's where the tabs are, the little clip on the subframe, or sorry, the clip on the grill that hooks into the subframe is here and here. And what you're going to do is we're going to put the screwdriver in and we're going to twist and that will push the two apart and release the clip. Now, um, we want to start with the bottom one because there's no way to release the two that are all the way here in the top. And so you're going to have to release the bottom, release the middle, or this upper one, and then you can tilt it out and the top ones will let go. So I kind of just like reach under here, get my fingernails underneath here and apply some outward pressure. Okay, and then put the screwdriver in right there and twist. Okay, and there, that turned loose. Now we do this one here, push it in there, twist, and it comes right out. Now let's deal with getting the subframe out. And uh, it, it, uh, there is no particularly good one to start with or end with. I just typically start with this one up here, slide it underneath that tab right there, and pull it up till it comes out. Then I move to this one, reaching through here and applying outward pressure. And then this one here. It's a little clumsy because I'm trying to avoid getting in your way or in your view. And then the fourth one, all done. You may have several reasons for removing this grill and subframe and one of those is to replace it with a, like a carbon fiber version or a different shape version and a lot of those have a frame that screws into place here it doesn't use these same little mounting knobs and so to remove the mounting knobs or what typically happens is you remove the mounting knobs and then you run screws through that new subframe into the holes that are here in the sheet metal and you've got the upper part of the of this button and then the lower part that sits against the sheet metal just slide a screwdriver in there and apply the same sort of twisting motion and it pops right out and that's all there is to it nice and simple and you won't break your grill now before you go go down there click on that thumbs up button feed that youtube algorithm and let them know that you enjoyed this video and you found it useful and if you're not one of my subscribers yet, go click on that big old red shiny subscribe button and join the channel. And finally, if you want to keep up with everything I'm doing here in the garage, including Project 987.2, maintenance on other cars, projects I'm working on, click on the bell icon. That turns on notifications for this channel, and that way YouTube will let you know every time that I post something new from here in Cliss Garage. I'll see you next time.